Okay, good afternoon. This week's lab consists of using the wind tunnel and we will study drag forces and the concept of a drag coefficient as part of the lab. I will start out with a brief walk around the wind tunnel. Um, the air comes in the scoop at this end. You can look straight down it and see where the air goes. Um, it goes in the scoop and then through the test section you'll hit about a hundred miles an hour at least with nothing in it anyway in there in the test section there's a student built load transducer or, or wind drag transducer I should probably call it um, that consists of a device that has two beams this beam and this beam and some strain gauges um, those small sensors that you can't see very well but they're an electric sensor when the beam flexes that creates strain in the beams and the strain changes the resistance of the strain gauges and then with some electronics we're able to determine um, ultimately what the drag force is also there's what's called a pitot-static tube and this is a device to measure velocity and what it does is measures a couple of pressures um, and those in the way that's going to be set up for your experiment anyway those go through a couple of electronic differential pressure sensors through some more electronics or really electricity and ultimately into a computer if we look around the wind tunnel this is where the blower is this brown part back here is the throttle we want to run the test today with the throttle wide open you just turn the crank and that'll bring the throttle all the way back this hemispheric type um, throttle can be pushed all the way in and slow the slow the flow way down but we'll run it today wide open around the other side um, there's the start stop switch can't see them too well but red and green assume we know what those are and then on the back side is a good place to work um, to take to get to your test specimen there's a sample in there let me just take the cover off and there's some tools, some um, ratchet and a couple of wrenches that'll work. When you take your specimen off, um, there's a single nut holding it on in the bottom. And leave the double nuts alone up here. Just leave those right where they are. And I would recommend putting a washer on top and bottom of your specimen. Otherwise, the, um, you'll crush the foam when you try to tighten it up. But you'll be able to take, your, take uh, your specimen out when you're done and put your specimen in when you're ready to begin your test. When you do that, put the cover back on and you just need to put a single screw to hold it on there. Once the wind picks up, this cover will be held in tightly. Maybe you can think of why. That has something to do with the fluid mechanics class. Well, we also have a computer set up. We'll explain what that is. Um, Maybe the best thing to do is to run a test. A couple of things before we do that, as far as safety in here goes. Um, if the wind's blowing, we need safety glasses. There must, so nothing gets in somebody's eye. Also, ear protection. Um, the ear beads here, ear beads come in a couple of different packages. If you haven't used them, you simply roll them up tight, kind of roll them and then stick them in your ear and they should expand feels really good and and up give you some ear protection the, the ear the sound is not deafening it's not um, painful but on the other hand you don't want to lose your hearing well the computer program the lab view program that runs this I'm not sure if you can see that or not the key things are this start button which is way up here in the upper left we'll get it started then you want to let it run for a while, um, half a minute or so. The air should be still. Nothing should be, uh, you know, push. Nobody should be pushing on the force transducer. And I'm sure you can't see them, but these there's some things on here that are mostly for diagnostics, just to help us make sure everything is working right. These numbers ought to be pretty stable down here. There's a graph here that updates so every couple of seconds maybe that should be pretty stable too there shouldn't be a lot of spikes in it once we think things are stable we're going to take the initial readings of, of our sensors then we're ready to start the test and that's this big button up here it says end initiation so we'll hit that and then after that um, everything is pretty much diagnostics over here 
for us these graphs that looks like we got a lot of noise we actually don't those things are pretty steady the things you want to look at are the drag force this is in pounds there, there may be a little bit of a flicker in that and then the differential pressure and this is in pounds per square inch so these two things right here with the air not moving these should be very close to zero and stay there well, I'm going to put my earplugs in and safety glasses on and we will turn on the wind tunnel we'll let it run a little bit um, we're going to let it run oh a few seconds I'm going to watch these numbers and when they get to be pretty stable I'll write them down then I'll turn the turn the wind tunnel off that those numbers drifted some. Um, I'd suggest maybe writing down a couple of numbers and then take an average of them. When we turn the wind off, everything should come back pretty close to zero. Uh, something worth noting is that even though the wind tunnel's been off for 10 or 15 seconds, the air is still moving through there. It gets some momentum going. Well, what you do at that point is write down the, the results. Um, the date, your group number, who's in the group, this delta P, your pressure differential, and, and also the drag force, uh, the, the initial drag reading, which will be zero or very close to it, and then what you get at the maximum, um, but that would be in pounds, and then from there we can do some calculations. To make your model, if you look at this one that's in, in the tunnel right now, um, that a, represents a block of plywood actually, but this is the minimum volume that a vehicle has to have. Four inches long, inch and a half high, three and a half inches wide. What you'll start with is a piece of foam. Zoom back out a little bit here. I guess that's all. A piece of foam block that's about a foot long. It's an inch and a half and three and a half inches wide. And you want to design something that to be as aerodynamic as possible. I refer you to what the chapter in your book, I think it's called um, the, yeah, the Drag and Lift. It's chapter 17. I've got an older edition of the book here, so it might not be chapter 17 for you. There's a table, 17.1, and it gives drag coefficients. What you want to do is minimize the drag force or drag coefficient on your object. Take a look at that, and this, this whole subject of aerodynamics is huge. So we can't, um, you know, do it in one easy lesson here. But this will be some fun anyway and give us some idea what to do. So you start out with a, a specimen like this. You'll be able to shape it a number of ways. We've got a number of tools for cutting foam. This particular one, if you turn it on, doesn't take much warm-up time. But if you want to, you know, do something that just cuts through, you know, pretty much like hot knife through butter. Um, you can do a lot of shaping like that. You actually move the part through the through the hot wire and shape it as you want. Um, another cutter looks like this. You plug it into a transformer and you can you know bend that wire a little bit. If you want to provide a certain shape you can accomplish that. To make the hole in your object um, this this, this type of, of a tool seems to work really well. And I'm going to try to illustrate that. I'm going to see here if we... How are we going to do this without... And think about this. Just need an extra hand here. But I would... The way I would do it is, is rather than drill, is use this tool. Get it good and hot and then just plunge straight through and back and it's, you need a, to be able to get a quarter inch 
threaded rod through so you can here's a quarter inch bolt I'll try that if it fits I'm done if it doesn't fit I can make that hole a bit bigger but there'll be some tools set up in the, in the classroom here to make this happen I'll remember to turn everything off okay so have fun be safe uh, one other aspect though when this thing is going it's kind of fun to stand behind the behind the wind tunnel to stand right in here and feel the wind blasting away at you when you do that though that affects what's happening upstream and it, it slows the flow down and it messes up the experiment same with standing in front of that scoop um, that's also going to affect the flow so when the when the test is going you need to be five ten feet away from the, this end a few feet away from the other end anyway just, just and that way we can get the most air th through okay